Hello guys, Nigel here. Wavy hands, yes, I know some people don't like it. Um, back with you with the final part of the Land Rover build. Um, actually, it's not part 12 of the Land Rover build because I've finished it. Um, I'm going to show you the finished model uh, before it's weathered or anything, but um, see what you think. Before we do that, I'm going to show you some photo etch. Now, um, Peter Harvey from PH Designs got in touch with me after I did my last video. And he offered to send me some of his photo etch for Land Rovers, which is she sent me. And it's very, very nice indeed. And I'm going to show you now and tell you how you can get some. So if you're building one of these Land Rovers, you might want to get some of this. Um, so as we know, with the kit we get, with the Wimmick kit, we get the, the photo etch set here. And you can see across the top we've got our um, photo etch grill there. So you've got the outer and the inner part. Um, it's nice, it's photo etch, it's fairly thick um, and it's a little bit chunky. So what Peter's done, he's come along and he's made this, which is basically the alternate set. So this is his um, set and this is called PH35 LRG, obviously Land Rover grill. And you can see it's basically the same. It's a two part grill as the real thing was, but it's, um, it's actually um, a lot finer. If we put it next to the next to the hobby boss parts we can see that the the actual grill the, the mesh on the grill is much finer and you can see that this is a lot less chunky as well the actual frame is a lot less chunky um, so you know you could keep this for your spares box use this whatever I think it looks lovely um, when I build my Wimic I'll definitely be using this luckily he sent me two of these because I've also got the um, the US Rangers Land Rover as well I'll probably build that one one day but I'm yet waiting for someone to tell me what I need to do to accurise that Wimmick. So um, there we go. So that's that. So that's that. That's um, PH35 LRG and that's available for £4.25 um, on, on, um, on the channel. And it's, it's channel. It's a website. It's called PH Designs. It does a lot of railway stuff. A lot of very unusual bits and pieces for modelling from uh, all different angles. Um, the next one I've got to show you is the... Um, Land Rover tread plate now this is very nice additional extra um, if you look at your references you will find you will find videos or, or, or pictures of these tread plates being used on army Land Rover so we've got the bonnet we've got the front wings and we've got the um, the floor plates there for the uh, for the interior so that's very nice you know it's in like a, a five bar tread plate and you can see it's very nicely done very nice to scale um, you know, not too deep as a lot of plastic molded parts are and the one thing I would question is the wings obviously the, the army did it different but as you know if you buy how oh, you may not know but if you've got um, a defender or something you buy aluminium wing tops for it they generally come as one piece and this center here is cut out for the grill so obviously the army do it different um, Peter did show me some images of uh, of Land Rovers with these fitted so but that's going to be a nice addition to your Army Land Rovers if you're going to use the Wimmick kit as a base to, to make a different kind of Wimmick or a Wolf or something. You can get resin wheels for them and all sorts and make all sorts of conversions. So that one is called PH35 LRTP and that one costs £8 again from PH Designs. And then what he's done here, this is another one he's done which is generic. And this is basically just a sheet. Let me have a quick measure here. This is, uh, what is it? It's 50 by 50, isn't it? Yeah, 50 by 50 millimetres, um, five bar tread plate again. And it's just basically a tread plate sheet that you can actually use as they would in real life. You know, cut it up to certain sizes size you want, fold it, whatever. Ideal for making those um, rear corner fenders if you want to, or any bits of door bottoms or sills or whatever. You know, you see a lot of old Land Rovers now with them um, checker plate all over them. You know where they're covering up corrosion and stuff so uh, you could be doing that and that sheet is basically 599 um, and that one's called ph35 mtp so uh, yeah very nice sheet there so um that's our aftermarket looked at now let's go and have a look at the model so i'll get this um this turntable thing set up and we'll get the model in place for you to have a look at um this is basically the short wheelbase um, conversion from the Hobby Boss 110 hardtop kit number 82448 
Um, I'm thinking I could probably enter this in a competition as out of the box because I've added nothing other than a couple of little bits of plastic card here and there, literally for for bulking things up or something. But um, yeah, as you see it, the, the wheels, the tyres, the exhaust, everything is as it comes out of the box, but um, with a few little modifications. So where is the model? It's going to be on this turntable right now. There we go. There she is, 135th scale, short wheelbase Army Land Rover uh, 90 from a 110 long wheelbase kit. Um, good things about the kit, beautifully moulded, very, very crisp, very clean, um, quite well engineered, goes together lovely. Um, you know, really, really nice kit for a beginner, I think, to build out of the box. It has its errors. Apparently the Wimmick is, um, is full of errors. I can tell you now something you'll see straight away on here, the Land Rover. The um, the side windows here they should have a they should be sliding there will be sliding windows in an Army Land Rover so um but there's no they've got the sliding mechanism on the inside but there's no step there there should be a step where the the actual panels overlap each other if you look at a real Land Rover you'll see what I mean um, whether later Land Rovers had actually had wind up windows I don't know but they've certainly in this one they've got the mechanism for the sliding windows which is basically a lump on the inside about halfway along the door. So what you can see there is basically XF67 NATO green uh, all over. The interior, the seats, the steering wheel, dash and everything is all done X18, semi-gloss black and I've done a few bits in XF85 rubber black. As I say, this is part 12. I've covered this build in 11 parts all the way up to, to here, the finish. In the last part, we actually cut the hard top down. We cut it around about here and as you can see, that's come out really well and it's um, seamless. All I've done is after I let the glue dry for at least 48 hours, 72 hours. If you can go a week, it's better because solvent cements always sink back and the line will reappear. After that, I put some Mr. Servicer on there, left that for another couple of days. And then, you know, another quick layer of Mr. Servicer over the top after it's rubbed down. <clears throat> and there we go. Um, cover about paint and everything's good. You'll probably notice it's got finger marks all over it or I've been holding and handling it. I think it kind of adds to the realism because that's how they are in real life. Um, where you get guys leaning over the wings and stuff to get into the engine bay. They're oily, you know, they're, they're slightly oily overalls and stuff will mark the paint. And believe me, this matte green paint picks up oil like nobody's business. Um, to add some realism, I should probably add some dirt and dust. Uh, I should probably add some diesel stains from around the filler cap. Um, you know, there's lots of bits and pieces I could do. But I'm going to call this for now, I'm going to call this finished. Um... I've literally just finished it. I've just glued the mirrors on. Now, bad things about the kit, for me, quite disappointing. The front end's all wrong. There's something wrong with this front end. I've, I've got a feeling the wings are too high, perhaps, and the bonnet's too flat. I'm not sure. There's something definitely wrong. Um, the spare wheel is there on the bonnet, totally as a wind-up, just to get you guys going. Army Land Rovers, I don't think, carried a spare wheel on the bonnet, so... That's going there. That is supposed to be mounted here on the side, but I don't like the look of it. And you'll see on the on the standard wheels, we've got the same. We've got a great load of wheel rim sticking out. And you can see it on here. The wheel rim sticks out a mile. It's much wider than the tyre. So I'm not going to put that on. I don't like the look of it. The hard top is still removable, as is the bonnet. So we can remove the bonnet or the hood if you're in America. And we can see the engine detail inside there. Um, so that's all there with the, you know, we've got the header tank and the brake master cylinder. We've got the windscreen washer bottle over there. There's a decal under there to say, mind your hands on the fan. Um, engine painted in that typical sort of duck egg blue colour that army engines are always painted in. Let's get this bonnet back on. There we go. Go on. Well, that drops on every time because as soon as you put the camera on, there we go. So there we go, bonnet's back on. Um, I did some work around here and the side here where it holds the axe head and I actually cut the axe head out and just left the tool holder in place. I don't know if I can zoom in and show you that. So you can see that there where I cut that away. Um, I did add the little lumps on the bonnet because they're basically um, clamps for carrying tools and stuff. But I haven't put any of the tools on here. As you can see, you've got the banks on the top of the wings there for the radios. I've left them without radios in place and hence there's no box or antennas on the side here. And if you remember when we made the cuts on our bodywork, 
um, around about here we cut it in places where we leave these clamps and bolts and stuff in place for an extra bit of realism and also you've got the hooks on the side that would hold the canvas down if it had a canvas top. Um, rear cross member a lot of people would probably think it should be black a lot of army land rivers I've seen it's painted green so I've left it green on this one. The glazing fits like a dream um, I fitted the glazing with um, crystal clear microsol crystal clear or micro crystal clear should I say. The tyres are painted with MRP um, tyre black and the paint is glued to this vinyl uh, like a dream you can see it on this spare here um, it doesn't scratch off it doesn't flake off peel off or anything so worth remembering if you do want to sort of add a bit of realism because tires are always molded black they're not black they're a very dark gray um, that MRP I've got the paint here what number is it it's um, MRP 173 tire rubber black it's called um, and I think that looks really realistic especially when you look at that spare wheel you know, it's, it's a realistic colour and I haven't painted the tread. I've left the tread as is, but then just given the sidewalls a fogging. And as I say, it stayed on there beautifully. So uh, worth remembering that one. Uh, and I got that from Premium Hobbies, which you can see the sticker in the background. So um, the lights, uh, basically be careful with your light arrangement arrangements. They, you know, they're not the same as a road Land Rover. What I've done here, I've painted the backs of the clear lenses silver first. And then I've painted the fronts in the red or the amber or just left them clear as you can see in that in that fog lamp or reversing lamp should I say. Um, then glued them on. Then what I've done is gone over with some um, liquid mask like Maskol or a Vallejo, Vallejo masking fluid. I should have had this ready to show you. You've got this one here. Where is it? This one here which is okay as long as you don't use um, any clear coats on your clear parts it attacks it um, so basically I've used that and then painted around there in green again and then taken the mask off gone around with a toothpick and just scratched the paint off to leave a sort of you could probably just see it there we've got a green surround on the actual light units and I've done exactly the same on the front now the front of the North American spec type lenses with the flat lenses and the rear two red lenses you can see on the outer sides there they're the uh, UK type, you know, with the, the bulbs, the, the bulbous sort of shape to them. Headlights, did all that in the last part, a lot, lot to look at there if you want to go back. Again, I did the same on there, masked them up and then painted the rims and then went round with a clear um, a, a toothpick, sorry, to, to make them clear again. As I say, windscreen fitted like a dream, that went in, again fitted with crystal clear. So, uh, yeah, so there we go, guys. If you want to see underneath, the bonnet will fall off as soon as I lift it up. Uh, there we go, you can see the underneath there. I've done no weathering, no dirty or anything. I'm kind of tempted to leave it like it is, at least for now, and then maybe add some stuff later to I don't know. You can see this white blotch down here. Um, that is where I've actually super glued the bottom of the door. The door fit is awful. Nothing to do with the conversion, um, but the actual fit of all three doors within the hard top is very poor. Very, very difficult to get a nice fit. And it's almost like the the top of the door is longer than the bottom, if you like. And it was really, really difficult to get them to fit. So I've had to sort of favour it around. And luckily, because it's a Land Rover, you can get away with the excuse of saying the panel fit isn't perfect anyway. Um, you can see down here the fit of the door against the bulkhead isn't the best. Um, that bulkhead could actually go back a bit. And as you can see, it's all still adjustable. So, you know, it, it's a case of just messing around with it and getting it all right. But um, I'm happy with the way that's come out. Um, and I think I'm going to leave it at that for now. So we're going to call this one done. So for all those out there who never finish a model, this is another one to add to the list of finished models, which there have been many of. Um, so there we go. Hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I enjoyed it. Got a little bit tired of it towards the end because I could start to see shape issues. And there's nothing worse than having a model you look at and it just doesn't look right. I mean, to me, that front end, it just doesn't... If I lift it up, I don't know if you'll see it, but it just doesn't look right. It doesn't look right at all in my eye. So um, there we go. But uh, there we, it, it was a, the, the idea of the exercise was to see if we could get a short wheelbase Land Rover out of a long wheelbase Land Rover without buying extras and resin and stuff like that. And there we go. And if you do want to do this yourself, the whole video set sets, the whole video is the, the whole, I'll put it in a, um, a playlist. The whole series is completely dedicated to this is how you do it. 
other than this last video where I've gone on and done the last bits of lights and mirrors and just little bits and pieces um, everything else is sort of covered in the video as, and it's like a full how-to series so there we go um, thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you all soon bye for now oh don't forget to hit that like button and uh, subscribe yeah bye for now